Hi folks, this is Jürgen from Netronic Software and today I would like to talk in this video about how to handle ba uh, backlogs in Gantt charts using our visual scaling widget. Now, what are the characteristics of a backlog? A backlog is a breakdown of all work to be done to meet the requirements on a product or a project. Think, for example, about all the jobs, tasks and operations that have to be done to build a product or to execute a project. A backlog consists of a set of work items and these work items may be structured as a simple linear list or they may be nested so that we face a hierarchy. When we schedule a backlog, then the scaling task consists of two different steps. First, we have to assign all work items to an appropriate resource, and then we have to time them appropriately. This means that we have to find for a work item the uh, proper position in this diagram with respect to its position in time and with respect to an appropriate resource. Both steps are not independent from each other. For example, it makes no sense to assign a work item to a resource uh, when this resource is not available in the respected time range. And it depends on your application and on your way to schedule backlogs, whether you first assign a work item to a resource or you first specify uh, the position and time of a work item. Now, how can we integrate a backlog and the interaction with a backlog into a Gantt chart? And the good news is that our visual scaling widget supports both dimensions of the scheduling. And for this, uh, the widget offers first the entity table and secondly the top view area and as well some more options to assist the user in his work in the best possible way. And the best uh, way to support the user depends on the concrete situation. For example, work items have predefined uh, durations or sometimes a work item can be assigned to suitable resources only or the position in time has already been specified. Now that's enough theoretical stuff, let's come to practice. Here you, uh, you see the sample application of our visual scaling widget and at the moment uh, the resources view is displayed and we have here in the table part five resources, machine one to machine five. And as you can see here, each resource has its own calendar and the non-working times are visualized by these gray areas. And for example, machine 3 has a different calendar than for example machine uh, 4. Now we can switch on the entities table by using the widget option entities table visible in resources view and uh, then we see an additional table which is displayed to the right of the Gantt diagram. And this table has all the options uh, you know already from the Gantt table. Uh, you can define multiple columns and the user can interactively uh, change the width of the columns. You can have a special symbol column to add additional semantics to each row and the entities inside this table may be nested. For example, we see here that work item 2 has two child items, work item 3 and work item 4. The user can now take an entity and for example he can drag work item 1 onto the Gantt diagram and he can move the mouse horizontally to find uh, a proper uh, position in time and he can of course move the uh, mouse vertically to find the proper resource. And now if the user releases the mouse button then the application will get an event. 
and it's now the part of your application to react on this user request and your application has for example to create an appropriate allocation and uh, to assign this allocation to in this case machine 4 and here we see only a sample application and in this application we do not have implemented any business logic so in this case we do not see a bar inside the gun diagram for the user it's very difficult to find an appropriate position in the Gantt uh, diagram because he has only a date line and he has no information about the start and the end uh, of uh, this work item. And this is why you can also give each entity an additional property and this is the duration property. For example here work item 3 has a duration of four hours and if we now drag this item onto the gun diagram then we see that an additional bar phantom will appear and this bar phantom will also recognize the non-working areas um, of a resource and so you see that the phantom bar will become uh, larger or shorter and for example in work item 4 we have a duration of 24 hours and then you see a longer uh, phantom bar so far the first feature to handle backlogs in our gun chart widget we will now switch off the entities table and now we will see the top view area and the top view area can be switched on by setting the option PM top view area visible and we see now here on the uh, top of our gun diagram a special section and this section is separately vertically scrollable and now uh, we have here our work items and now the work items have a predefined start and end date. Now the user can drag a work item, move it vertically onto the regular Gantt diagram area and then he can choose the appropriate resource. And the user cannot move uh, this work item horizontally so it's guaranteed that the user will not change the start and end dates by accident but sometimes you also want to allow the user to change start and end date and then uh, you can uh, set an option which allows the user to move the work item all over the gun diagram some remarks to explain it in more detail. In the top view area of the resources view you see in each row a resource and for example in this sample we have the resource called unassigned work items and in the Gantt uh, area of this row uh, we see the allocations so each work item here is an allocation and this is why you can use all the allocation properties for these bars here and for example we have an interesting property for, uh, set at work item 3 uh, this work item has set uh, some suitable resource IDs and this is very useful for user if for example you uh, have only some resources uh, that will be able to handle a work item and if the user now drags this allocation or this work item then we see that only machine 3 and 4 are highlighted and all other machines are darkened and this is only a visual uh, aid for the user uh, nevertheless the user uh, could uh, drop the work item here at machine 1 or at machine 2 
but it's only a visual help for the user that it would be best to let uh, the uh, work item drop at machine 3 or 4. And once again, it's the task of uh, the application uh, to, re to react in a, a good way. I hope you have now some ideas uh, of how to handle backlogs using our visual scaling widget. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Mm -hmm.